Hello everybody, as you can see these are my uh, Celestian Ditton speakers in a state of uh, disassembly. I've had these speakers I think 20 years now. Lovely speakers, really sensitive, hardly needs any power to drive them and uh, I was lucky enough to get them on uh, eBay for £60. Think back 20 years ago and uh, they were in Bristol so it wasn't too fast to drive and they were in a fairly poor condition I mean the cases were not the uh, veneer was fairly damaged and scratched and whatever but I sanded them down and varnished them and made a pretty good job I think but all in all these years I've never ever got round to thinking about the crossovers so I thought I'd take the crossovers out and see what state the capacitors were in them um, because these speakers are now probably well over 40 years old and as we all know capacitors uh, degrade with time so I've done some measurements in the workshop and they're quite interesting. So here they are, the two crossovers, left and right, on the bench. And uh, I thought it'd be interesting to test the uh, capacitors. And I've already done this, but I'm going to go for it again. But uh, luckily, with the modern internet, it's uh, so easy to get um, all the information you need. And I found this schematic of the crossover section and this one says for Celestian Ditton 44 original crossover with black baffle. Mine's got the black baffle because I think there was an earlier version of the speaker. And so what we've got here is basically a low pass filter and uh, all the inductors check fine. I've checked all the inductors all the way through. All perfect. Well, you wouldn't really expect inductors to go out of tolerance, would you? I suppose they could, but not normally. But um, I think what I'm going to do first of all is check uh, these 72 microfarads, which are rather a, a weird value, but so are many of the others in this design. So let's test the 72s and uh, this being the low pass filter section along here. Right and uh, that tests out at 71.4, so that's not too far off 72. So I'd say that was uh, acceptable. Let's try the other one, which is identical. No, that one is 68, so that's gone down to 4 microfarads. So that's obviously not ideal but um, I don't know what the original tolerances were on these capacitors they may have been specially made for the uh, crossovers but um, let's go on to the other crossover and check the same ones Okay. Once again, this is seventy two, and that is reading seventy. So, not too bad, I guess. And the final one in this low pass. Ah, 
Oh, that's interesting. So that has gone right, right down to 63 microfarads. So it looks like that one's uh, fairly out of tolerance. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? And uh, what I think I'll do now is the mid-range. The mid-range capacitors, this is the mid-range filter across the middle here. And it's got some, what have we got? We've got um, according to this schematic a 24 and a 6 microfarad and also a, a 6 down here as you can see I've already been writing on what my measurements were but uh, strangely enough on mine I haven't got a 24 and a 6 what I've got here is a Got a 24 there and uh, an 8 there, so that would be a total of 32, I think. 24 plus 8 is 32. Yeah, so straight, so for some reason, they've whatever changed the values on those, but. Uh, and um, let's take a measurement anyway of those and they're non-polarized of course so doesn't matter which way around so that's supposed to be an 8 and it is and uh, the 24 is supposed to be a 24 and that, oh, that's bad. It's right down to 15. That is certainly unacceptable. That would have affected the frequency response of this crossover. Okay, so let's go on and do the last one, which was supposed to be a 6. That, am I reading that right? That's, a, that's gone up to 13. And that should be a 6. So that's doubled in value. There's, well, it's a sure sign that capacitors go out of tolerance. I mean, these crossovers probably are well over 40 years old. Probably going on for 50 years old. So we've got old capacitors that are generally fairly dodgy now. That's doubled in value. That's, now, so the whole thing is completely out of its original spec. Okay, let's do this um, other one here on the other board. Now this is the first one which is an 8. Right, so that 8 has gone down to 7.3, so that's gone a bit out. This is a 24. And that one is reading 17. So that's gone way low. I think the other one I measured was um, 15, but it's still not acceptable when it should be 24. And the final one in the mid-range was the 6 microfarad. Mm, now that one is... 17. So that's gone from 6 t t to 17. That's nearly tripled its value. That's appalling. Absolutely horrendous. So that would have really badly affected 
the crossover frequency. Okay, well, finally, we've got the um, tweeter, which is looks to me like a high pass. You've got a capacitor coming in, inducted down to earth, and capacitor coming out to the speaker. Now, once again, they've used capacitors which are no longer available at um, two microfarads and they've got two twos in parallel to produce four and then another three in parallel to produce six. Okay, let's measure those. Those are the two twos. I've disconnected all the leads obviously. Ah, so that should be a four and that's gone up to nearly six, so that's pretty far out. And this is three twos. Three twos are six, and that's gone up to nearly eight. So that's also fairly bad. So looks like they all need replacing, apart from some of the 7.72s, but. Uh, Anyway, let's check this other board finally. And uh, two twos should be four. 4.9 gone out a bit. Okay, last ones are three twos in parallel six. And that's gone up to 6.9. So a little bit higher than it should be and uh, so there you go all the capacitors need replacing it appears but of course the main problem with getting capacitors is that I won't be able to get most of those values I mean, you know, you're not going to buy a 72 microfarad, but um, what I think I'm, what I, or what I've already done is I've actually ordered some from a Chinese seller, and uh, I actually ordered all the new capacitors from this particular seller. What I'm going to do for that is add. 47 and 22. Seven, seven, six, seven, six, seven. So I'll come to 69. So it's not going to be perfect at 69. But um, it's the best I think I can do. And uh, what have I done for this one? What am I having it? Yeah, 24 and an 8. 24 and 8 are is thirty-two, right? <clears throat> and I think thirty-three would be good enough for that, which is a fairly easy value to get. And um, the six, well I'm gonna use a six point eight. It's still gonna be a lot better than what I was measuring. Oops. One was seventeen, I think the other was fifteen. So that's the what I'm going to use for that, 6.8. Finally, um, when it comes to these combinations of 2 microfarad, I'm just going to have to use 2.2. And that's going to be 4.4 instead of 4. And again here, it's 3 2.2s is going to be 6.6. .6. So it's going to be slightly out. But um, hopefully not too bad, and it'll almost certainly be a lot better than it was before. But you know, I've been using these speakers for all these years, and I've never noticed any problems um, with the sound. But I think the human ear is fairly forgiving. So. Yeah. 
Although, I, when I talk, talking about capacitors and availability, when I was trawling the internet, it took me hours really to searching for all all these values and the rock. I wanted to buy them all from the same place, at not too high a cost. I did find a 72, would you believe, from a specialist hi-fi shop. But get ready for the price. They were 15 quid each and I'm afraid I'm not going to spend 60 quid on four capacitors because there's two in this one and two in the other other board. Uh, so no, I couldn't go down that route. I wanted to keep the cost as low as possible. And I th I'll show you what I've ordered. Okay, um, as I was saying, I was looking for on the internet. It seemed the only place I could get reasonable price capacitors that were non-polarized was from China. I would ideally like to buy in the UK, but because of the time they'll take to get here. But um, looking at this one, for instance, this is a 47 and I had to buy four of those, so £9.76. But uh, when you get to the 2.2s, I had all the 10 of those and that only cost me £2 for 10. So that was quite good. But when you look at these on eBay, they say plus £3 postage for each one, each different type of capacitor. So I thought, well, if I'm ordering one, all these different ones, one, two, three, four, five, five different capacitors, with three pounds postage on each one, that's going to be a lot of cost in postage. So I emailed the, sent a message to the seller and said, I want to buy five different values of capacitors from you. Uh, what would be the total postage cost and they got back to me really quickly which I think is good because I think I always find Chinese uh, companies are really good at getting back getting a message back to you very quickly and they said it would cost £2.50 total for all the capacitors as you can see I've got £2.50 listed down there this is my purchase history, obviously. So I thought that was pretty impressive. I've just got to wait for them to come, and I don't know what the quality is going to be like. You can look at one of them. I mean, they say audio filer, whatever, whatever that means. But uh, just have to wait and see. I think the estimated. Uh, delivery was anything up to a month away but um, I've often found with when they say that you can get sometimes get things within a few days of um, ordering them even from China and what else Yeah, the only other worry is that the customs will get their hands on it and depending on what the value they've put on the packages, on the package, I may get charged import duty and uh, VAT. But um, I've been very lucky in the past. I've found a lot of the sellers will underestimate the value. In fact, um, I think I had one parcel from China and uh, it had a, a true value of $100 and they'd put $10 on it. <laughs> so I got away with that one. Um, just before I finish this, because I can't do much more now, I did do, um, for something to do, a frequency response test on the, uh, the base low-pass filter. 
and uh, I actually marked, wrote it on the board there. I was getting a 3 dB point of 590 hertz. Um, and if I look on here, on my phone, uh, not that. This is the specifications for the uh, Celestian Ditton. You know, it says 30 hertz, 40 kilohertz. Uh, impedance 4 to 8 ohms. Maximum conti continuous input 44 watts. Well, that's fine because you need hardly any power to drive these. Crossover frequency 500 hertz, which tends to match up fairly well at my value of 590 hertz that I measured. But it depends how they're measuring that. I was measuring at minus 3 dB and uh, they may have been measuring at a different uh, might, they might have been measuring at minus 6 dB for all I know and the other crossover is 5, five kilohertz so there you go and that is about all I can do until the uh, capacitors uh, turn up so um, I'll see you in a few days, or maybe a few weeks, just, just have to wait and see. Okay, capacitors have arrived, and uh, much to my surprise they came so quick, 11 days from China. I think that's pretty impressive really, considering I only paid £3 total postage. And not only that, the uh, tracking was absolutely excellent, I could see their pro their journey all in various stages of processing and when they got to the airport in China and when they got to the airport in the UK after that I lost the tr there was no more tracking it was three days ago they arrived in this country so they just turned up today and they are big I mean they're that's a 47 microfarad and uh, that it's gonna have to go in there somehow on the uh, board. I think it will go in. It's just a bit bigger than I was expecting. And I thought not only that, because that was originally a 72, I decided to parallel it with a 22, uh, which equals 69, which is not too far off. 72. I don't think it will make that much difference. But um, I thought I might just check, check one of these. I'm not going to check them all. Too, too tedious to measure every capacitor. But um, if I check this 47, okay, well that's saying 47.6, and the idea was to parallel it with a 22. So if I can parallel those two up, which is going to be quite hard. Okay, uh, so the legs are not quite long enough. And that comes to 70.6. So it's not too far off um, what it should be, which is 72. So there you go. I'm quite impressed with these. I don't think there'll be too much problem getting them on the board. Um, I've got to get one in there. One in there, and one in there with the 22s on top. So, I'm not going to bore you with the soldering, I'm just going to go ahead and put one, get them all in. But my plan was to just do one crossover initially, and then put it back in the speaker, wire it up, and then compare it with the other speaker with the non recapped crossover. See if I can tell any difference. And I I probably won't, I probably won't hear any difference, but we'll try anyway. So here it is, crossover, recapped, fairly happy with it. These things stick up a bit, a lot more than the old ones did, hoping that's not going to cause trouble with the uh, foam packing in there. We shall see, I've glued those down to the bigger ones. 
so they won't move around or vibrate. Also glued down and tie wrap down some of the others. And I put on new wires because the old wires are pretty miserable and thin. That's the input wire, that's the base wire which is going to carry the mo most current. And I'm not going to bother to redo the wiring on the tweeters and the mid ranges because they're adequate for what they need to do. So I'm going to now go and install this in the speaker and compare it to the other speaker which hasn't been recapped yet. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, um, back in the lounge. Speaker on the left is the one I've put the recapped crossover in and the one on the right's got the original crossover and to be honest I can't tell any difference between the two speakers, but such is life. Well, you, when you consider that some of those capacitors are so far out of what their original value was, I'm a little bit surprised, but let's play a bit of music. This is copyright free YouTube music, so it's fairly awful. That's the best I can do. Left speaker, recap. Go to the right speaker. For that rubbish, as I said, I can't tell any difference between the two, but such is the uh, nature of the human ear, fairly forgiving. Anyway, I'll get on and do the uh, other speaker and give it a final test. Second crossover done, so ready to install, and there's all the old ones, old capacitors, nasty old horrible capacitors. So I'm going to go ahead and install it. Just in case you're curious, this is the inside. Uh, crossover mounts on the back pl plate there and we've got the uh, mid-range wires there and the tweeter wires there so I'll just get get it in position right just solder those wires on right well they're all done and the fronts are back on Glad that's over with because they're quite heavy things to move around. Uh, big speakers, big heavy speakers. So let's play some more of this hideous music. This is another trap. Okay, well, that's enough of that. Um, it's YouTube copyright music, so you're never gonna get what you expect, I suppose. But uh, yeah, I think I'm fairly happy with them. They're, I honestly don't think they're much different to how they used to be. And by the way, I was only, I'm only driving them with a 10 watt amplifier, which is this valve amplifier. And leak, leak, stereo 20 amplifier. So um, they don't need much power to drive. I wouldn't even be able to turn it up to 10 watts. It'd be far, far too loud in this room. That was probably just about 50 milliwatts you were hearing. And I wouldn't want to turn them up anymore anyway because it would just distort on this camcorder. So there we are then. Um, thank you for watching. I can't think of much else to say about it. But uh, yeah, it's, I'm glad they're done anyway. So bye for now.